Let's jump right into it and I'll show you how the magic works. So I have a page designed here in Figma and I have the Figma to Webflow plugin open here. I'm just going to select the frame and I'm going to hit copy to Webflow. And once it's copied, I'm going to jump right into Webflow and hit Command V and ba bam everything right here is copied images, styles, everything is right here. I'm actually just going to do one thing, which is going to this wrapper and remove the max width, just because we were working on a 1440 frame in Figma. So it thinks that's kind of like the maximum width, but I just want this to be like all the way through. And it's actually, let me close this pasting. It's centered, it's even responsive. Check this out, even the menu here works. It's not styled because we didn't style it, but everything just works. Buttons are buttons. Isn't this amazing? Mind blowing. All right, so let's dive into how this plugin works, how this magic happens, what you can or cannot do without it, and how to actually use it. Um, so the, the core of this plugin is to understand that basically auto layout in Figma and flex in Webflow are actually the same thing. There are the same properties and basically how telling the, the browser how to organize element, the browser or Figma, how to organize elements within a frame or within a container, right? So the, the number one thing you need to do in Figma, if you want this to work, is to set, is to make your designs and use auto layout and wrap everything just like you would in Webflow. So let's see how this page is structured. So we have here, first of all, the whole frame is auto layout just to stack them, you know, um, horizontally or sorry, vertically one on top of the other. And then we have this nav bar, which is an auto layout, the hero, which is basically the section and within it, we have the container, right? So the container has a 1200 pixels width and it is fixed. That's how we create the container. That's basically the max width within Webflow. And then we have a column, two columns here, and each of them is also auto layout. So this is crucial to make sure that this plugin works. Uh, just originally when I designed this, it was just basically a bunch of groups and you can see my unorganized design here, which is basically a bunch of layouts and just like things grouped together without logic. This will not work when I'm trying to copy it. You can even see I have to select an auto layout frame to make this work just because otherwise Webflow wouldn't know how to organize uh, the 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 elements coherently will just be like, uh, you know, fixed or absolute positioning, which is really the worst thing ever. Um, and why most other kind of like plugins to move things uh, from Figma to the web doesn't work because it doesn't understand the logic. So here the logic using auto layout just transfers and everything that's transferring the text, the styles are transferring, the images are transferring. It understand when you organize, when you, um, call some something a button, it turns it into a link. So it's going to be a button and it's going to work that way. Uh, if you have icons, it's automatically going to export them as SVGs. So everything just happens out of the box. So let's talk about how responsiveness happened and how the how we knew to basically turn this navigation into, you know, a mobile navigation with a link. And that's because here in the plugin, you can see that besides hitting the, the copy button, we actually have a bunch of ready-made components, kind of like wireframing components here, and they include the logic. And the logic basically means how do they behave in different breakpoints? Because right now we cannot design for different breakpoints using this plugin, so we can just design for desktop. And if we use these components, then, you know, the logic is going to transfer. So basically there are two possible workflows to work with using this plugin. Number one, you can take your original design and just start organizing it and turning these groups into auto layouts. That's one thing that you can do and it will work. However, it will not transport the logic of responsiveness, right? So another ideal probably workflow would be and one more thing, by the way, that I forgot to mention and it is crucial, it cannot transport the, or just copy the fonts inside, right? Because it doesn't really know what fonts you're using. In this case, specifically, we're using Google fonts, but you might be using custom fonts. So the plugin cannot copy the fonts into Webflow. So before you do the copy, you have to go into the project setting, which I did before I 
did the demo. Went into the project setting, load the fonts, and only then copy and paste, and then it will match the font into the right font. One more thing that I didn't say is that, you know, it's going to actually uh, transport the name of the classes as well, which is really, really useful. You can see here, we already have hero features, like everything is named correctly and makes it really easy um, to later use and reuse within Webflow. So I was talking about the, the ideal workflow. Number one thing, you want to start your project, you want to load the fonts inside of Webflow. And then here, if you have your design, which might not be really organized, what I would probably do is I would go ahead and create a new frame, like a new desktop frame. And then I would, of course, turn that into an auto layout because it needs to be an auto layout. And then I would just start bringing in the relevant uh, kind of template blocks or layout blocks that already have the functionality that I need, like maybe uh, a nav and maybe a hero and just add them into this um, auto layout. I'll start restructuring kind of like the, the, the website. And then basically I'll just copy and paste the, okay, so this is not what I wanted because it's doing the auto layout horizontally instead of vertically, but now this looks better. Um, so basically I would start pasting my design into these components if I want them to have the special um, responsiveness and other functionality that Webflow included for us right here. I think this is really, really an exciting plugin that's going to make, you know, again, instead of trans taking an hour to build this, now turning this um, into Webflow in just a few seconds, but actually it's probably going to be minutes if it, we're going to take time to organize the the artboard and the, the frames correctly in auto layout. It's going to take minutes instead of hours, and it's going to make our work so much faster. I'm really excited about this. Of course, right now, this is really great for pretty standard components or layouts like the ones that we have here. Um, if you have a more customized design that might not work in auto layout, might need some other things or either kind of like sliders or things that are a little bit out of the box. Of course, you know, the the, the logic of the plugin wouldn't know how you want to transport it. Um, but I think for like 80 or 90% of common layout blocks, this is going to be so useful. And it's going to even just the copying of the styles, right? So imagine just even transparent, transporting your style guide using this, and you already have your H1, H2, H3, you already have your colors, you already have, you know, your typography set in your images, you don't have to go ahead and upload them. So I think it's going to be a huge, huge time saver. And I'm really, really excited about this, I encourage you to go ahead and give this plugin a try. If you want to learn more about exactly how to use this because I didn't touch on points like, you know, when when we are um, using auto layout and we have to understand that it's it's being migrated into a flexbox. You have to think about things like, um, you know, when we have here we, we have this property here in the frame fill or hug, which is basically correlated to the the flex box here of the sizing. So you want to make sure that it's set to fill and you have to pay attention to all of these kind of like flex box details. So if you want to learn more about them here in the plugin, you have here help uh, with a little bit of documentation to learn exactly how to use this um, so that it copies into Webflow and looking exactly like you want this to copy and, and, and look. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about this plugin as I am and what you're going to do with it. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.